Good afternoon. I'm Pastor David Felton, and it is a privilege to be here on behalf of Darlene and the family. I want to thank you all for being here to celebrate together a wonderful life. The Apostle Paul wrote, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Friends, we get Paul's advice as we witness to and celebrate the life of Arlen Blackwell. Acknowledging our human loss, but we also come together in gratitude to celebrate and remember a life lived with creativity, generosity. It's good to come together in times like these because we need each other in empathy and consolation, in courage and wisdom, and to navigate this new reality for one another. It's in times like these that we're reminded just how precious life is and just how fragile this mystery of living is. Together, our sorrow, we also gather together in awe. In birth, in life, and even in death, our lives embody glimpses of the sacred. The life Arlen lived in all its uniqueness has now passed into memory. And so it is we gather this day, lifting up his gifts and graces, the presence that he brought to each of us in our relationships with him, and we see how with and will travel with us into the future. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow hope, and in death the promise of new life. I invite you to stand as you're able. For all the saints who've shown your love, you'll find the words in your guide. For all the saints who've shown your love, Let's pray. The Spirit of life who brought us to birth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in the asking. Give to us now your grace that as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. 
speak to us once more the solemn message of life and of death and remind us that every mind to think and a heart to love is an expression of the Spirit of God. Help us to live with so when our days here are accomplished, it can be said that we lived life to its fullest last days, so that living or dying, we may be enveloped in grace. Nothing in life or in death will be able to separate us from the love embodied in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Well, for our words of faith from Hebrew scripture, I'd like to share some selections from Ecclesiastes. Uh, notice as being familiar from uh, a particular pop song, but it's uh, they've been around for a long time. They embody a deep truth about life. For everything, away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refer, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate a time for war, and a time for peace. And these words of hope from Christian scripture, from Matthew. Look at the birds of the air, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And are not two sparrows sold for a penny? will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your fear not, therefore, you are far more valuable than many sparrows. Cindy? Must have been cold there in my shadow to never have sunlight on your face. You were content to let me shine. That's your way. You always walked a step behind. Glory, while you were the one with all the strength, a face without a name for so long, a beautiful smile to hide.
To share with you a poem that the author is unknown, but it is called A Life Well Lived. A life well lived is a precious gift of hope and strength and grace from someone who is place. It's filled with moments sweet and sad, with smiles and sometimes tears, with friendships formed and good times shared. A life well lived is a legacy of joy and pride and pleasure, a living, lasting memory. Our grateful hearts will try. Spirit of life, you renew our inner strength. You touch our imaginations and you lift us to find deeper meaning in life's circumstances. Embrace us, strengthen us, and be with us as we affirm and celebrate Arlen's life today. Amen. I'd like to share with you just a, a couple. One is some biographical background on Arlen, and one is a letter from Albuquerque. Arlen Blackwell was born on December 13th, 1932 in Fife, Alabama. He graduated from Davis High School in Kaysville, Utah, and in 1951, and then served in the U.S. Army to 1955, assigned to the Corps of Engineers, surveying Alaska for the first time. In 1958 and 1960, Arlen worked in, at Sandia National Laboratories for 35 years, retiring in 1994. He served in numerous staff and management positions at the laboratories in Livermore, California, and in the 70s, he represented the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission as a technical advisor to the U.S. delegation to the Council. Say that three times fast. That's a lot to put on a business. In 1980, he was elected to the member grade of fellow in the American Society. Arlen met Darlene in Albuquerque at the Eastern Hills Baptist Church. Married in Albuquerque in 1993. And in 2000, they moved to Phoenix to be close to John. And in 2011, they moved here to Fountain Hills. 
returning to Albuquerque. During their 28 years of marriage, Darlene and Arlen traveled extensively throughout the world. I think you'll see examples of that in our pictures in a minute. They visited their family members in Alabama, Florida, New Jersey, Virginia, Washington, D.C., Japan, Germany, Italy, and they were there. They often vacationed in Hawaii. Arlen loved being a grandpa and was loved dearly. By Just as an example of things that I learned about Arlen that I didn't know before, that you always say, oh, I wish I would have known about this so I could talk to him about this, was that during the Kosovo crisis, Arlen was part of in Macedonia to assist refugees. He also participated in several mission trips to Mexico and helped build a church in Arlen and Darlene have been members here at the Fountains since 2011, and they were act he was an active member of Bible Arlen didn't always say a lot, but when he said something, you better be ready, because it, was, it usually opened a can of worms. Um, Arlen suffered several strokes over the past three years and passed away day, August 19th with Darlene by his side. He will be laid in the National Cemetery in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I have some notes here from Arlen's friend, a pastor friend in Albuquerque. Ron writes, Arlen Blackwell was a precious Christian brother and a greatly difficult for me to share all that flows through my heart. connected at church decades ago, and I am forever grateful that the Lord placed him in my life. Anyone who knew Arlen knew he had a welcoming smile, a hearty handshake, a keen mind, a quick wit, and a tremendous sense of humor. At his wedding to the companion of his heart, Darlene, and also to serve as his pastor for several years, Arlen always saw the person in the people. He looked beyond the surface worth of each individual. Certainly, that was true for me. Whenever we'd see each other, he'd open his arms out wide for a big hug. We shared our challenges and our sorrows along with our hopes about God, history, and the state of the world in ways that men rarely, if ever, do. Each of us knew that God brought our lives together and that we were each better for the relationship. Arlen always sought to stand by my side in times of great challenge, and he built into my life in ways that made me not only a better pastor, but a better person. And to speak of someone who means so much. Words are not what treasured man means to me. We who remain already miss him greatly, but to say the least, we'll never forget him. I hold very closely in my heart treasured memories of Blackwell, and thank God for bringing him into my life. Pastor Ron Mansdorfer. Good afternoon, everyone. She just sung a beautiful song about my hero. He was mine. That man taught me more than I could ever tell you. Today is YouTube and Google. My son wants to learn how to do something. He could jump on the computer and know in minutes how to fix something. I had my dad, so much to the point that I remember 
self-reflecting and saying, gosh, am I asking too many questions? Because he had the answer to everything. He really did. And in his education and his background, he was very, very smart. Just knew every question, every answer to every question I ever had for him. And the first word inside of the program is celebrate. I think that's what he would want from all of us. We've all had our private moments to grieve and to cry and to reflect on the memories that we had of my dad. And I think he wants us to gather in fellowship here and celebrate. So let's try and set that tone and celebrate here today with one another. I thank you all so much for coming. It's a beautiful time. It's a beautiful day. You know, I'm a 49ers fan because my dad was a 49ers fan. He came to love the Arizona Cardinals and the Suns and the Diamondbacks when they moved to Arizona, but in his up in the Bay Area near the 49ers, they're on a bye week an accident. <laughs> so they took they took the day off to celebrate Arlen too. So thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you all so much for being here. You t you talked about um, when he said something caused a lot of conversation. I have a, a lot of memories about my father at 39 when I was born and that smile on his face right there is emblematic of him. He is very happy at all times He's very sarcastic, <laughs> has an incredible sense of humor, and was very, very, very quick-witted at, at, at the younger ages. I think he enjoyed retiring. I know he loved our I know that he loved kind of yielding to Darlene in his later years, and he didn't talk as much as he did earlier on. But the, 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 the dad that I remember was all of those things. Quick-witted, funny, sarcastic, and the apple didn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> fall far, much further either, so. <laughs> you can just let's celebrate Arlen. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. Is there anybody that would like to just share a memory that uh, they will remember him by? Don't want to miss out on any juicy stories. We didn't make any plans to get it rolling, so somebody's going to have to be brave. Anyone? I know there are stories out there. I'm looking at you. All right. Well, I'm sure we'll be able to su share stories and stuff when we're not under pressure. Words. But uh, as John mentioned, I was always grateful for my classes because he did not speak much in his later years, but you knew things were going on. <sighs> when they came out, um, they would sometimes send us off down a rabbit hole, but uh, in the end, it was always something that most people about it anyway, and nobody else had had the acumen to ask the question in just the way that Arlen would have asked it. So I'm always grateful for Arlen for that and for his commitment to this community of faith and all the, the work and support that they here at the fountains and to me as a pastor I'm going to miss miss him greatly so all right I think we have got some adorable pictures so Richard we'll have some adorable picture music this works
for putting those pictures together and uh, you noticed that uh, Darlene said how is it that when I got done with the slideshow whenever Arlen was not pictured with family he had beautiful young women with him <laughs> more of those than I thought so there you go thank you Sophia and Jay for getting up Let's take a moment to uh, be in prayer. God of us all, your love never ends. And when all else fails, you still are God. In our need and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day, to those who doubt, give light, to those who are weak, strength, to all who have sinned, mercy to all who sorrow your peace keep true in us the love with which we hold one another and help us even now to trust you in all our ways all that you have given us O god is yours and as first you gave arlen to us now we give arlen back to you we're grateful for all the blessings in our lives to this day, for the gift of joy and days of health and strength and for the gift of the Spirit's abiding presence in days of pain and grief. We praise you for home and friends and for all who have faithfully lived and died. Above all else, we thank you for Jesus who showed us a life of integrity and hope who knew our grief, died our death, and rose to new life. And as he taught his first followers, so now we pray. Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite you to stand as you're able and join together in singing Arlen's favorite song, Amazing Grace. Oh, 
never able to thank all the people behind the scenes that go into uh, making a service like this. Especially thank Richard and Cindy for leading us in music uh, today. I want to thank uh, Denise for pulling together all of the printed materials and others, um, and all of the volunteers who helped make the, uh, uh, the reception come together. And we hope you'll stay for a little bit and visit with family and one another. Uh, to share those stories about Arlen. So thank you to everyone who contributed to helping make this a great celebration of Arlen's life. So as we go, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Let's go in peace.